Well, hello there, viewers, and welcome to Get Well, Stay Well on Revelation TV with my TV, shall I say, sorry, with myself, Cyrus, and as always, delighted to be joined by Felicity. How are you doing? Hello there, Cy. Look at this ghastly juice. Look at the colour. Isn't it dreadful? But it, you know it's full of carrots and cucumbers. It's not that bad, Felicity. Celery. Mine's, mine's almost right. done. Mine's almost <laughs> finished. It's very, very pleasant. Mm. It's very nice. It tastes all right, and that's the great thing. Can you repeat you the, um, the ingredients again? Well, cucumbers, I always start with cucumbers. Yep. I've got carrots, I've got celery, I've got a little bit of lemon in there. But um, when I made it, I thought, it looks like a hot chocolate or a coffee, doesn't it, really? But never mind. Uh, it's going to do us good. Excellent. And Fantastic. sustain us through the program, hopefully. Wonderful. Now, you talk about program. What is on today's program, Felicity? Well, we've got a really exciting program because um, I'm going out to Mexico uh, to the uh, Gerson treatment and uh, to the Oasis of Hope Hospital where I'm going to be filming because I'm taking a cameraman with me this time. Wonderful. So it'll be really exciting so people will be able to see exactly what it's like there and bring back all the information that people can do most of this stuff at home. Oh, brilliant. And uh, so talking to the two, probably the two best doctors in the world, um, you know, uh, Contreras, Dr. Francisco Contreras has been a revelation many times, got me well in 2003. He's like an old, old friend, you know, he's absolutely wonderful, completely trust him. And uh, so he's invited me to stay with the cameraman as well. Fantastic. So we're going to be staying in the hospital and we have got a couple of revelation viewers who are there at the moment. Oh, so. Wow. I'll be able to do a little interview with them as well. It'll be such fun. And at the end of the day, Felicity, our viewers will actually be delighted if you see, see this kind of footage with you in it and, and the interviews that you're going to be doing as well because we're constantly trying to improve the programmes that we're recording for Revelation TV as well, aren't we? Right. Well, I think it's really special because this doctor actually got me well and for patients to see exactly what it's like there and, and you know, what the treatments are, it's really interesting. And because I live on the Gerson therapy, uh, we're then having a couple of days with uh, Dr. Patrick Vickers. Oh, wonderful. Who is um, probably, he's the number one guy on Gerson. It's the juices, it's the colonics. And then he's added a few medical things as well, which uh, we're going to be talking about today. So really interesting. Mm. OK, well, we've got our first uh, VT available for our viewers today. This is with Patrick Vickers, and he's talking about the advanced cancer protocol with the Gerson therapy. Let's take a look at this. Hey, what's up? It's Chris from ChrisBeatCancer.com, and today is the fourth installment of our video interview series with Dr. Patrick Vickers of Northern Baja Gerson Center in Rosarito, Mexico. Uh, so again, this is video number four. There's three other videos that we've done. The first one was explaining the history of Gerson, all about the Gerson therapy. The second video was a Gerson therapy Q&A based on your questions. The third video is all about coffee enemas. And today we're going to talk about um, all of the advanced protocols that you may have heard about, read about, or maybe not heard about at all, uh, and what else they're doing there. One of the biggest differences between Northern Baja Gerson Center and some of the other Gerson clinics, um, some of them are very strict and all they do is the nutritional protocol. And uh, Northern Baja, they incorporate a lot more than just the Gerson dietary regimen. They, they use a lot of alternative protocols uh, on top of that. And uh, that's why I'm a big fan of what they do because I didn't do just one thing. I didn't just do the diet. I did everything I could find and afford. And so that's why I think it's so important to work with someone that has a wide array of tools uh, at their disposal. So anyway, um, Dr. Vickers, thanks for being on. Yeah, hi, Chris. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you again. So uh, I've got a list of some, some you know, alternative protocols, alter alternative therapies that I know you incorporate down there in your clinic. And so we're going to kind of run through them real quick so anybody watching knows what, what to expect. But we're going to talk about dendritic cell therapy. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, shark cartilage, urea, coles, ozone therapy, hyperthermia, and then IV therapy like laetrile, high-dose vitamin C, and um, chelation therapy too. Did I leave anything out? Uh, no, that I think that's pretty much everything that we're doing at the clinic, yeah. Yeah, and autologous therapy. Yeah, the autologous therapy, that's correct. <laughs> okay, the one I can't pronounce. <laughs> okay, so uh, cool. Let, 
why don't we start with dendritic cell therapy? Yeah, um, dendritic cells, probably one of the more important things that we do. And, and what dendritic cells are is they're like the generals in your body. They literally go through your body seeking out threats to the system. And the way they're able to do that is, is viruses, bacteria, cancer, they, they produce chemicals, uh, antigens. And these dendritic cells are able to pick up and detect these antigens. And they take that message and they go back and they present it to the immune system cells, to your white blood cells, your natural killer cells, all the cells that would that are responsible for going and attacking and destroying these, these entities, the viruses, the bacteria, the cancer. So dendritic cell therapy is something that um, we offer at our clinic. It's, it's one of the more pricier therapies, but it's incredibly powerful. And what we do is we draw the patient's blood and then their blood uh, goes through UV light photophoresis, so UV radiation, uh, you know, to kill off any pathogen, pathogens and stuff. And then uh, the dendritic cells are cultured. They're multiplied. So let's say when we draw your blood in that sample, there's 10 million dendritic cells. Well, over the four to five day period that you receive uh, that that those cells are being cultured, at the end of those five days, you might have a hundred million dendritic cells, and then they're reintroduced into your body um, as an IV. So uh, those dendritic cells, when they're reintroduced, they're going to be able to pick up those antigens in the cancer or virus or bacterial, whatever you're coming to us with, and the ability to rally the immune response is, is exponentially greater than it normally would be. And so the whole foundations of all these immunotherapies that we're doing is ultimately to get the dendritic cells to recognize the cancer so that it can present it to the immune system and the immune system can, can begin to attack the disease. Hi viewers and welcome back. Um, obviously they were talking about the Gerson therapy there, Felicity. Can you just, in your words, explain a, a little bit more about the Gerson therapy? Well, Patrick uh, trained with Charlotte Gerson, whose father was Dr. Max Gerson. And um, she asked him to look at the papers that her father had been working on when he, he died unexpectedly. Um, anyway, Patrick went and looked at all this and discovered that there were these therapies that he's now doing that uh, Max Gerson was thinking about. He was, he was planning to do them when he was and he was killed. And um, so Patrick is an absolute dynamo. I met Patrick last year when I was at the Cure to Cancer conference and I'm going to that one as well after I have stayed with Patrick and then with um, Dr. Contreras. So Patrick decided that he would further this um, research that Dr. Gerson had done and was working on back in 1958. So there was a, the dendritic cell theory is, is extremely interesting. It's all about boosting the immune system instead of destroying it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really interesting to see how cancer gets well and then you stay well, which is, you know, what I call my causes and everything, get well, stay well, because um, you really do boost the immune system so that it doesn't come back again. And so there's the shark cartilage, there's the Coley's therapy, all these different therapies, which I'm going to be actually seeing next week and, and uh, really taking part in that. So I'm really looking forward to that. As a nurse working with one of the top doctors is absolutely amazing. He's probably the best in the world. Now, people will be wanting to know what, it, what are the best ways of preventing cancer, preventing these diseases? That is what's really about, isn't it? Well, that's, that's my passion. That's uh, having lost my daughter and nearly died myself. I really want people to learn how to build their immune system so they're really strong. And then when, when you get um, problems, you know, you're able to overcome them. Mm -hmm. We fight off cancer every day, of course, and it's, I know that if I went back to the lifestyle I was leading, drinking coffee, having a lot of stress, eating meat again, I would probably get pancreatic cancer back again. It's, it's every day you, you, you know, I do my colonics, I do my juices. I really do live on this thing. When I go out, I used to have the odd little bit of fish and everything, but as I'm getting older, I find that I really don't want to do that. I'm better sticking with the juices. I, I really am. That's very interesting, and I think our viewers will appreciate that as well, because you've obviously been on the other side of eating the, the, the meats and the dairy and everything else that there are available. 
and and now you're obviously doing the juicing and that's what that's what viewers want to know is where do you feel are what are the differences that you actually feel from when you were doing the meats and everything absolutely else? well i mean i've been brought up on the on the meat and dairy you know the mad lifestyle we talk about meat and dairy mad and um, i thought that was perfectly normal <clears throat> i grew up in south africa england jersey and the channel islands and that was the way people lived so you assumed that you know you had a meat and two veg or fish and two veg and um and of course you drank tea you drank coffee um and what i did learn was when you know my daughter got so ill from probably the the milk that we were drinking there a lot of milk because it was a milk producing area like ireland is as well and uh, also the chemicals in the water. And it's always a combination of things, Si. You know, it's not just one thing. You don't stand in a lift and someone sneezes on you and you get cancer. You, yes. know, you build this up over years, probably, of um, abusing the body, really, by doing the wrong things. Because God has given us the perfect diet, the creation diet, Genesis 129 and 30. And when we go back to that, as the juices are showing, because we're juicing the vegetables, the fruits, and for snacks, we're having um, the seeds, the nuts, and we're having green plant, because mm -hmm. I do believe in the, in the uh, wheat grass. Yeah. So when we go back to that lifestyle, which God actually intended us to live on in Genesis 129 and 30, lo and behold, people do heal. Mm -hmm. And so the other side of it is that if people lived like that, they wouldn't get it in the first place. And it's also the willpower to change as well. Once you, once, you're, once you realize the dangers that you've been doing to your body and you kind of wake up and the light bulb moment uh, arrives and you realize, mm -hmm. hang on a second, I really need to do something. It's, do you have that willingness to change, that determination to really want to do something to improve your life? Well, that's what Patrick says to the patients who come to him. You know, are you prepared to be radical? Are you prepared to bite the bullet on this? Because, you know, you are going to have to radically change the lifestyle. And if they won't do that, then he just doesn't treat them. So it's, um, it's a matter of working as a team, which I think is so important, with your doctor, with the practice nurse. You know, you work as a team together. And, of course, they must understand about the the juices and the colonics yeah. and why you're doing them, the, the coffee enemas. Yeah. And um, anyway, it's going to be really interesting to spend some time with him. They also do the latril, which is the, the um, apricot kernel, which is done intravenously, which I had, and I was on that for two years. So it's not, it's not something you can do for a couple of weeks. And yeah. That's it, you know, you're fine again. You've got to really maintain it as well. Exactly. And I've maintained it's 12 years now, and I've maintained it pretty well. Now, what about what some of our viewers might be watching, saying, "Look, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the change. I'm going to start doing the juices." But before they start doing the juices, should they do some sort of detox before? Well, it's important to do the juices and the um, the colonics. You see, and people are really interested in these colonics. I'm getting the most amazing testimonies. People saying that they've got rid of all kinds of diseases and it's not just cancer it's it's heart disease it's autoimmune disease it's all about toxicity in the body mm -hmm. and the deficiency of living enzymes and as patrick says the only way you can get those living enzymes into a patient is by juicing because they could never eat that yeah. amount 40 pounds of organic fruit and vegetables a day yeah i mean nobody could eat that and so and the point as well though it sounds so much but it's so easy at the same time is that juicing is just very very simple mm -hmm. it's just a case of literally just putting the raw fruit food and uh, vegetables and fruits inside the juicer and hey That's presto right. you've got a lovely cup of juice it's That's as simple right. as that and you have to have someone go with you you have to have a helper because uh, people are not well enough when they're really sick uh, with cancer, autoimmune disease, or heart disease, or whatever it is, they're not well enough to really be doing the juices as well as doing the colonics. And that's where my husband was so marvelous because he did the juicing for me. And I had a juice on the hour, every hour. It's interesting, you know, they start with, you have one orange juice, then you go into green juice, you go into an apple and carrot juice, then a carrot juice, and then you, you start again. And um, that goes on all day. And some people, when they're very ill, can't drink very much. You know, they drink maybe four ounces instead of eight ounces. But at least they're getting the living enzymes into the body, which mm. actually build the immune system. 
and every doctor knows it's it's the immune system that heals so you mentioned earlier about the coffee enemas explain to us a little bit more about that well it's just a wash out of the colon to quickly uh, to quickly detox the body because if you're taking a lot of juices and you're not expelling everything properly uh, it's the toxins are reabsorbed into the body so vital to do the colonics as well okay yeah excellent okay viewers let's take a look at this this is the coffee enema procedure let's take a look at this first off you're going to need a pot a stainless steel pot to boil the coffee and you don't want to put it in a regular coffee uh, brewer like a regular coffee pot because um it uh, the oils need to to uh, release from the uh coffee so when you brew them in a in a stainless steel not aluminum pot because aluminum will leach and you don't want aluminum but the stainless steel pot is the way to go so we have the stainless steel pot uh, we have you start with four cups of uh, distilled water and we also have here this is organic you got to make sure it's organic because you certainly don't want those this is just from our local market but it's organic um, caffeine coffee you don't want decaffeinated you want caffeine you want the caffeine this is the only time I promote anything coffee and caffeine based is when you're doing these enemas so anyway you've got your, your coffee here and then uh, this is optional but I have a little screen here to strain the coffee on you don't want to use a white uh, filter paper filter and I'm just going to put it in this pot so I can take my grounds out of it and transfer it in here then put it into the enema bag so um, and then of course you need a little two tablespoon measurement for measuring out your coffee so here's what you do you take your um, four cups of distilled water pour them in the pot turn it on high on your oven Stove all right and you only need two tablespoons of the the organic coffee make sure they're flat okay just put them in there flatten them out and there you go now what we're going to do is um, let me stir it around for a few seconds kind of mix that up a little bit okay you just let this boil bring it to a boil for five minutes, five minutes. Um, after it starts boiling, then you just turn the, the uh, eye off and you let it sit and cool down with on, on the burner, okay? And you get it, you check it periodically. It's probably gonna take, oh, I would say at least maybe a half an hour for it to cool, to get to cooling temperature. Um, but you want it about body temperature. It's better to have it a little colder than too hot. You don't want to put anything up there that's going to be too hot. It'll burn you. So uh, but get it to about room temperature or body temperature. Just kind of put your finger in there and check it out. Hi there. Welcome back. I think it's such an interesting clip there because so many people are curious, aren't they? We always talk about these kind of things on our show and for people to actually physically see the procedure, it's very interesting. It's great because people say, how do you make it, you know? Do you have um, cream and sugar in it? No, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. So anyway, she does it really well and shows you exactly how to make it. It's very, very simple. And uh, I always say to people, the first time they do it, start with just water. Yep. Then if you get spilled, it's not too bad. Is there any particular type of water they need to be using? Distilled water. Yeah. You know, I, I have a distiller, as you know, and I will only drink distilled water if I get the chance. You know, sometimes you have to have a bottle of mineral water, but it's always got additives and things in yeah. it and you and it's out of a plastic bottle as well mm. so uh, so much better I just use my distiller I do that a couple of times a day and uh, just have fresh water for drinking washing the face as well and um, and also for doing the colonic or the enema the coffee enema but mm. anyway it is interesting and I think there's nothing like seeing something you know you can read instructions six times and you still don't know what it says but if you see it yeah you've got that picture in your mind and when you actually get to the kitchen and start making the thing you you know how to do it I just want to go through some of the benefits of doing a coffee enema it helps to reduce levels of toxicity mm -hmm. it clean it cleans and uh, heals the colon increases your energy levels mental clarity and the mood that's incredible as well it's how our, the, our psychological state is affected by the things that are coming inside and going outside out of our bodies. That's right. Helps you sleep as well. Mm. It's, a, it's interesting because you think coffee is a stimulant, but actually when you've got rid of all the toxins from the liver and everything is, has come out and you just feel amazing, the tummy feels really flat, you feel really good, and then you can have a lovely hot bath, perhaps with the Epsom salts or something, you know. Um, and then... You, uh, 
uh, you can do a magnesium oil massage, uh -huh. which also relaxes the body. So that's the best way to get a good night's sleep. Because at the end of the day, Felicity, everybody is stressed in their lives in one way or another. Now they, they might have a full-time job or they're, they're simply a housewife or whatever they're doing. They come, everyone comes across stress at some point of the day. Mm. And it's, it's what do we do when we come through those moments? How do we relax ourselves? That's what people are wondering. Absolutely. Remember we did the thing about the lymph drainage yeah. and stroking the face like this. <laughs> Good idea to do that as well. Excellent. Because... It is something it's so it's so important for people to look after themselves and sometimes people can just think about their career or their work or and everything else and they forget about looking after themselves and that is what's so important because it's it's the years of strain that your body has gone through over the many mm. years isn't it that it kind of accumulates at the end and and sometimes what do, what do you do and obviously you've got to detox and do the juicing but why not do what you can now to prevent anything happening in the future absolutely your body's only as good in the future as what you put in today as they say and you know some of the doctors say you never make up for the deficiency of the living enzymes that you have not had all these years so all you can do now is really go radical and you know really live radically well because after many years of drinking coffee probably and eating meat, uh, you know, people have suffered the consequences. So mm -hmm. it's, um, yeah, the prevention is the great thing, you know. I love it when I have young people on the course because they've seen what's happened to their parents. They don't want to go that route. And uh, it's really interesting that the children, you know, take it as a, a real sort of new pathway. They, yeah, they love it. The children love it. And of course, if they're not addicted to sugar, that's the biggest danger. How much isn't it? easier that's going to be for them? Sugar is sugar is the point there, really, isn't it? That's the problem that we see. We even see that daily in our newspapers every day when we open the newspapers. It's sugar, the obesity, the child, the children. They're going through so many problems, and if we can eliminate sugar in their lives, then that surely would cut half of the problem out of the equation. Absolutely, and these all the you know children in America who are hyperactive and, you know, swinging off the curtains. And so they're given Ritalin, which is a drug which really can damage the body. Apparently, you're not allowed into the armed forces if, as a child, you've had Ritalin, which, you know, is indicative of how toxic those sort of drugs are. Mm. And, uh, I mean, I'm really grateful. I'm not on any drugs at all at 74. I, this, is my, this is my medicine, really, here, you know. These juices are the medicine. And uh, it's wonderful to be free of, of, of the drugs because every single drug you take, chemical drug, will damage the liver to, to a certain extent. Yeah, and it's interesting that you've obviously, you've been there, you've done it, and you, you've come through the other side, shall we say. Um, and the juicing is something that is so important. And we're gonna be taking a look at a, a clip now, mm -hmm. shortly with um, Christina Raw. Um, from from the internet and she she produces a number of, of videos she has a great passion for juicing as well and uh, I think it's great to have someone that's young promoting this as, at the same absolutely. time absolutely well. yes I think it's great and she's she is a very bright girl she uh, just didn't want to kill animals anymore you know for, for her food she went on a voluntary trip do you remember to uh, some third world country <clears throat> and realized that they all had to kill the animal for, for dinner. And she thought she can't do this. She was about 15, 16. She said, no, I really can't do that. And she thought about it all and realized when you go back home to America, you know, the meat is all packaged. You have no idea the suffering of the animals. So she did it really from an altruistic point of view. And then she felt so good. She was so filled with energy and started running marathons. And um, then she started her own co-op where mm -hmm. people actually grew organic vegetables. Now, it's interesting you said she waited and she, she went to another country to see what was really going on. And, and sometimes we're all brought up in this bubble mm. that we're all used to, we were all grown up into it. And we, mm. we're completely unaware of the suffering of the animals that have gone through the procedures when you have all use, all we see is just a nice piece of meat on the, t on the plate when you go to a restaurant or something, mm. but you don't think about beyond that. But do you think there should be more access to fresh raw food for example, there are many fast food restaurants everywhere you go. Should there be more roof, raw food restaurants available? Oh, absolutely. Available? Absolutely. And in Mexico, where I shall be next week, I mean, there is great poverty in Mexico. And Dr. Contreras, uh, his father was a military doctor. He was an army doctor. 
and um, you know they treat the Mexicans free uh, but of course they make their money out of the people who come from the West the interesting thing is that because of our lifestyle in the West our so-called rich wealthy lifestyle we've actually become extremely ill and the people who are living on the vegetables and the rice just don't have the cancer they don't have the heart heart problems and they don't have the autoimmune problems so um, but the world is beating uh, their way to the door to to learn how to detox and so we are actually going back to life in a much simpler form mm. where people were growing their own um, their own vegetables their own fruit it's how things them. were Felicity isn't it it's the generations yeah. you speak yeah. to your your grandfather or, or an elder gentleman and they're all they they that's the world that they were brought up in it was a more healthier way of living fresh fruits fresh vegetables that's how they were living and now you look at the generation today and it's all quick 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 food and it's mm -hmm. nothing's healthy not really thinking twice about what you what you're eating or putting inside your stomach and of course big food you know uh, the big food companies have actually made us addicted to the sugars and the wrong fats, the wrong salts. I mean, there are good sugars in, in fruit, obviously, but um, the aspartame, which is the artificial sugar, is particularly bad for us, causing a lot of brain tumours. And, of course, the mobile phone world that we live in as well is not doing us any good. Um, so it comes from a, a variety of, of different things in our lifestyle, you know, the stress, the wrong food, the uh, sugar drinks, everyone's mm. addicted to these sugar drinks, uh, thinking lemonade and tonic water and things are okay, loaded with sugar. Yeah. Okay, well, let's take a look at our next clip. This is by Fully Raw Christina. She has a YouTube channel and this is talking about the real juice. Let's have a look at this. The main base ingredient is tomatoes, so make sure you have plenty of those. You'll also need spinach, beets, carrots, celery, and parsley. Okay, so depending on what type of juicer you have, you're either going to need to cut up your ingredients or not. I'm going to need to cut mine just a little smaller into bits because I'm going to need to fit them into the feeder for my Huron juicer. And it's going to rotate them through and it's just going to make juice. It's literally that easy to do as long as you have a juicer. If you have something bigger like a breville, you could maybe even stick in the whole tomato. So we're gonna slice up our fruit as much as we can to fit through our holes, and then we're just gonna put it all through the juicer. And by the way, I do recommend ceramic knives or any type of Japanese knives. Those are my favorite kind. We're gonna turn on our juicer, and we'll get juicing. The main base ingredient of this juice is the tomato. So you wanna be sure to include more tomato than everything else. That way the flavor comes out to be really savory, salty, and rich. Look at this amazing tomato juice. It looks so delicious. Mm. <gasps> I love it. Oh my goodness. Did you see this yummy tomato juice? Okay, I'm gonna have to clear out my little container at least two or three times because it doesn't fill that much juice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in my straining bowl and have it mix all together in the end. And I'm gonna pour it through the strainer just in case. And I know a lot of you guys may be asking me why I strain even though it's going through a juicer. It's because I really like my juices to be very, very smooth and consistent. And when you pour it through a strainer, it makes it that much more sweet and savory and smooth and just, it goes down amazingly. Even when in your juicer you think that you've gotten rid of all the pulp, look how much more you get rid of when you strain it. There's a lot of pulp in there. Next step, we're gonna be adding in all the other veggies. We're gonna add in the celery, then the carrots. We're gonna cut up just one or two beets and put them in there. And then the spinach and the parsley, and then we'll be done.
Oh my gosh, here it comes. Here it comes, and we're gonna be pouring it into the strainer. Look at that gorgeous deliciousness. Oh yeah, check that out. That looks amazing. Look at all these colors blending together to create vitality for your life. A lot of these reds mean that there's a lot of lycopene in here, which is amazing for you. The greens are high in minerals. And even the carrots are high in beta carotene. So you are getting the best of all worlds in this VA juice. Welcome back. That absolutely looks fantastic, doesn't it, Felicity? Gorgeous colour, don't mm. they? It's That's color, the point. Colour of your top, actually. Yeah. Your jacket. <laughs> but you see, if you put beetroot in anything, it's going to really bring out the colour, isn't it? That, uh, and now, red. when you do your juices, mm. do you normally stick to one colour? Yes, I do. I, I like to have my colours really pure, you know, because then I like to have a pure apple, a pure carrot juice, and then maybe a beetroot. Um, I really like to see the colours. But on the other hand, if you've only got time to make one juice for the day, mm. then you just put everything in. And yeah. I do believe that you know God has created this wonderful rainbow of colors for us. And we know that there's lutein, there's resveratrol, there's uh, carotenoids, there's all the different enzymes that relate to colors. So when you eat a, or drink a rainbow a day, you're going to get a good mixture. You know, it's like taking a, a multivitamin or multi-mineral pill uh, when you put them all together. I think it is, I think it's great. But I love the colors, so I enjoy having, you know, beautiful yellow juice, beautiful orange juice. Um, so it's really, it depends how people Is there your favorite ingredient that you just simply can't live without that you'd say most of your juices you have to put in? What is that? Cucumber, cucumber mm. and apple. Apple's the second one. I actually got well on carrot and apple juice. Really? Because I didn't know, I hadn't been trained in those days about the green juices, but I knew about carrot and apple. And I lived on carrot and apple for about four months. Talk to me about quantities, Felicity. How many, if you're making a carrot and apple juice, for example, how many apples and carrots would you need to do? Well, we've got about 10 carrots in our two glasses today. And uh, two apples, a little bit of celery, little bit of lemon but um, it's you know it's really heavy carrying all those those uh, wonderful vegetables home yeah so I have a trolley bag now and I go to the market and I have my little trolley bag and fill it up with all the heavy things at the bottom you know the onions and the oranges of course gorgeous oranges and is that the best place to get your your fruits and your vegetables from the market well I think so because I know the growers you see I've, I've sort of made friends with them now and they have this lovely stall in the market yeah. and on the front they have just gorgeous colors and then at the back they've got a smaller one which is actually all organic right. and so they now know what I want and uh, you know it's just nice to know the people who've been growing this yeah. stuff. Yeah. And what about juices, the, the actual juicer itself? What, what do people really need to look out for when they, if they want to buy a new juicer? Well, um, the juicers that you and I use are, are the, um, the proper masticating, triturating juicers, which is the slow push with the auger that the food is actually pushed through uh, quietly so it doesn't get thrown around and oxidized. When you have a centrifugal juicer, which is much faster, with a wide mouth, you can put a whole apple down, for instance, and um, that, will, that will juice much quicker. But of course, you won't get the really fine uh, enzymes that you would have got with the slow push juicer. Right. So I've got the Champion and I've got the Lexan and various juicers that I've got over the years because okay. I demonstrate them. And then I've got a Nutribullet as well, which is a little blender. Yeah. And I because that's a question most most of our viewers always ask us is what is the difference between the blender and the juicer? You, do you still get the same results? No, it's different. Obviously, the blender is not going to separate the pulp from the juice. So uh, it's going to be a much thicker, a thicker drink. And some people like that. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. So uh, it's an ide ideal to have both. And then when you want a thicker juice or some of the family 
like a thicker juice, then you can blend it for them. With the blender, with the Nutribullet, you can also put in a banana or avocado to make it more substantial. Mm -hmm. But um, having been so ill myself, I think I prefer the really fine juice because my digestive system is not what it used to be, as they say. Yeah, and what about yeah. the strainer in the juice? We saw from that video there that she was actually used an additional strainer to the one that she had it built in within her juicer. Is that something that you would use? Yeah, I do. I do strain it. I've strained this for us today. And, uh, it, you know, you just lose a little bit of the pulp, but not much. And then you can make the pulp into flaxseed crackers as well. So nothing is really wasted. Wonderful, because I think that's a good, that's a great point you've just mentioned there about what do you do with the pulp or what do you do with anything else that's left over? Because there is a, sometimes a considerable amount of, of uh, pulp left over from when you do the juicing. So you're saying about the flaxseed uh, crackers. How do you make that's that? That's right. Well, they're lovely. You make them with linseeds or flaxseeds, which is the same thing. You uh, soak them in a big Pyrex jar. Use a big Pyrex jar with, d with uh, distilled water. And say so they become like a gel. And then I cut up very fine some yellow, red, uh, orange and green peppers, which are lovely and colourful. And so I cut those up, dice them up, put those in as well, and some garlic, some onion, a little Himalayan uh, salt. Mm -hmm. And then I'll spoon that onto the tray of my dehydrator and pop them in overnight. And then you have the most delicious, savoury flaxseed crackers the next day, which is wonderful. And we, when we were in New Zealand, uh, we were living in New Zealand for six months, and I was really studying out there where they grow the wheat grass. And we had this wonderful donkey <laughs> who loved the carrot pulp. And the problem was <laughs> that he used to come vi at actually dawn, you know, as dawn broke over the Bay of Islands, which was very pretty. And this donkey would come braying outside <laughs> until we gave him his carrot pulp. Oh, it was really funny. funny. Excellent. Yeah. So the donkey was staying healthy as well. Very healthy donkey. <laughs> now, we talked about juicing, and, and I think something else important to discuss is, is exercise, Felicity. How important is exercise? Well, it's vital, isn't it? And if people are really ill with cancer, of course, they should rest as much as they can. Um, and then I gradually built my health up again with the, uh, the walker, you know, the, um, uh, a li like a Langlauf machine, it's called a... Mm. Uh, a walker that you have, you stand on it and it has these uh, sort of foot things that go yeah. across so you're not actually pounding the pavements. Yeah. And rebounding, of course, is the other thing that's really good. So that's all I could do for about mm, a year, probably. And something, I guess, easier than anything else is just simply walking or jogging as well. Yeah. That's something that you just need a pair of trainers, fresh yeah. air, and that's it. And when people are fit, of course, you know, they should really exercise and uh, make, your, make yourself a priority as well. Because, mm. you know, Jesus said you love others as you love yourself. And if you don't respect yourself and the, you know, the temple of the Holy Spirit that we're living in while we're here, if you're not going to look after that and respect it, you're not going to look after other people as well. So it is important to prioritize and 